All right, so maybe can I start? I think. All right, so the nice to meet you. My name is Michio Honda, and um, today I'm going to present a PACE, which is a high performance end system networking framework using NetMap API. And so this is uh, the joint work with my awesome colleagues, uh, Giuseppe Lettieri, Lars Egart, and Doug Santri. Uh, if you have any question or something later on, so please just drop me a message on Twitter or email, whatever. And uh, the call you're using today is, uh, is here, uh, but I think it will disappear at some point uh, after merging it to original NetMap. So first of all, so what is this talk about? So this talk is about what are problems with current network stack and socket API today and how, we, how do we solve that problem, okay? And this talk is not about kernel network stack is slow, let's bypass everything. I have awesome user space network stack. This talk is not about that. So if you expect something like this, I recommend you to go some other excellent uh, sessions. All right, nevertheless, the problem is kind of similar. So the current socket API is not that fast. So to get some intuition, so let's see the, some benchmark with some simple request response workload. So in this, in this experiment, so we send some the, uh, the 1400 bytes HTTP post and replying back of uh, HTTP OK, which is some 64 byte, four byte message. This is experiment is done with Linux, but uh, the we can expect quite similar with FreeBSD. And this uses just HTTP and TCP, okay? So the typically the server code so doing this kind of processing looks like this. You fetch uh, the ready file descriptors, so new, message, new messages are arriving, and you iterate over ready file descriptor one by one by issuing pair of read and write system code, okay? So the, the, here is the result. So the left is a throughput and the right is a latency for the different number of concurrent TCP connections. So you see the throughput. Um, it, is only, it uses single core, but still the, the, it can achieve only 2.8 gigabps. This is not that great because uh, today's modern network speed is 10, gig, 10 gigabit or 40 or even 100 gigabit per second. So latency as well. For the single TCP connection, it's actually pretty good. So we can see 23 microseconds for the HTTP run type of data. Um, but when we have 100 concurrent TCP connections, the latency goes up to 400 microseconds. This is not that great. So the, this result shows that so for modern network speed, socket API is not good not that good, okay. so uh, I think you got some intuition now. So the second problem is current network stack cannot support emerging non-volatile me memory very well. That's the second motivation and the problem. So the, I think some of you may never heard about non-volatile main memory, so let's quickly review it. So non-volatile main memory is literally main memory whose content survive reboot, okay? As a result, non-volatile main memories offer very fast, much faster than disks or SSDs, and by the addressable, not based on block, uh, the access to persistent data. So the visually it looks like this. So we have CPU cache at the top and in underneath you have main memory and access there is very fast but you, their content go away when you are machine reboot, right? And to store data persistently, uh, you have disk so SSD at the bottom and it has much higher capacity and the content survive over reboot. But access there is very slow and you have to issue the system calls uh, like read, write, or some F-sync. But having non-volatile me memory here, so now you can access persistent data uh, just using load or store and privileged interaction and access there is almost as fast as DRAM. Maybe slightly slower, but still two, three orders of magnitude faster than the hard drives and SSDs. So once the NVMM put into the system, then the entire architecture looks like this. 
So you can create a file system on non-volatile memory, something like you create file system on RAM disk. But once the file there is mapped into user address space, you can directly load and store uh, the data there without using any buffer cache. Okay? Uh, that's uh, the main point of non-volatile main memory. Okay, so then the, let's go back to the problem definition and let's see the, how the how the end-to-end -end systems uh, is affected by end-to-end -end transaction speed is affected by non-volatile main memory. Okay, so just using a previous code, but so we have now some the the, uh, the processing that store data from the socket buffer to non-volatile main memory, okay? So we have memory copy to NVMM and also flashing data from CPU cache to the actual physical media, okay? So here is the result. So this compares the case which doesn't store data on NVMM at all and the case which store data there. So the surprising that throughput gets almost half and latency increase almost doubles. So, yeah. Uh, why are you doing the extra memory instead of reading right into the memory? Oh, yeah, so that's a good point. So actually, we have the same experiment, but actually it, it led to even worse performance. So because the memory copy is implemented using optimized instructions like SSEs, but the read and write removes data using, you know, the normal instructions. So the, I can tell you the more results by showing the graph later, but it's a good point. But it's the same. So the point here is, okay, so even for non-volatile memory, don't copy data, okay, if you really want high performance. So the summary of the previous uh, the two problems is let's avoid per socket system calls and I/O requests. Uh, okay, so that's the first summary or first requirement. And the second requirement is uh, the let's avoid data copy at all, even for non-volatile memory. It's is uh, decreases throughput and the increases latency. All right. So before the going to solution, so let's get our question right. And the question is, how do we address these problems while preserving benefits offered by current network stack and socket API today? So that's the main question. So here's the page of what we propose. And the page is framework that achieves scalable, flexible, uh, the end system networking. And paste offers true zero copy since the NIC DMA, even for non-volatile main memory, okay? So that's the first thing. The second point is you can batch system call and IO operations across multiple sockets, okay? And the third point is you can use existing the excellent kernel TCP, IP, CTP, UDP, IPv6 stack uh, which has a lot of extensions, not just doesn't implement the original RFC, but implement almost all the RFCs, okay? And also, but API itself, on the other hand, is pretty protocol independent. So it uses NetMap API, so it's not bound to specific transport protocols. And so we can offer both blocking and busy polling depending on what you want. For example, if you want some low CPU utilization or some efficiency, you could use blocking. If you want ultimate uh, low latency, even at idle time, time period, uh, then the, you can use busy polling. You can also the benefit from protection, so your application can crash, but the rest of the system is not affected. Okay? Actually, the last four features is, are exactly what we benefit from Socket API today, okay? Um, so going to a little bit more details, so the page consists of uh, the two NetMap extensions. So NetMap is a packet IO framework uh, the, to efficiently move data between the kernel and the user space, and that is already in FreeBSD. And the first extension is stackport. So NetMap, depending on type of the interface, NetMap uh, provides uh, multiple port types where application access. So the stackport is some the NetMap API, but which the data goes to kind of TCP IP stack. So this is the same level of abstraction with uh, the pipe and byte port, if you're familiar with NetMap already, okay? So the, the other extension is XMM subsystem. So by default, 
net map is a create shared memory, memory region in the kernel by using standard malloc. It is actually contig malloc, but it doesn't matter. So the memory region is kind of anonymous, okay? But using XMEM subsystem, now the user can give a bitory memory region on its virtual address space to the kernel to create netmap shared buffers. So by creating file system on non-volatile main memory and the end mapping a file there and giving it to the netmap. So you can create NVMM backed uh, netmap memory allocator or sh shared uh, memory memory region. Okay. So these two the netmap extensions are heart of the page. So, okay, so the, but let's uh, take a look at how the page works end to end. So, here the, we have user and kernel space, and in the kernel, you have uh, TCP IP stack and Nix. And you also have shared memory region used by NetMap, which contains uh, the several, net, several types of NetMap objects, like packet buffers, which are fixed size and statically allocated. You also have NetMap ring, this is a set of pointers to buffers, okay? So the important point is ring buffer doesn't contain buffer itself. It just contains buffer indexes. So here the ring is initialized with uh, the point, initialized by pointers to packet buffer 20 to 27, okay? So, and user can access this shared memory region uh, via, the, via this ring. And, um, okay, so you, without copying any data. Okay. So imagine that, so, that, so how it works. So application first issues system call, like poll system call, okay? So the poll system call internally triggers NIC packet IO. And in this case, suppose that the application is trying to receive some packets, okay? So the poll initiates NIC's packet IO and have the TCP IP stack process receiving packets. So imagine that, so the, we are now getting uh, seven packets. And imagine that TCP IP stack identifies these other, these are in order TCP segments. So in the end, so the kernel or netmap sets these seven in order TCP segments to application visible netmap ring. So the, it places the packet buffer zero to seven, uh, sorry, zero to six, to the application visible netmap ring. So the ring now con points packet buffers zero to six. And 27 is not used yet. And to indicate the application, the data is ready from the car to tail, so the kernel also advances tail pointer, okay? So at this point, the application recognizes so the, now the application returns from the poll system call and recognizes that, okay, from car to tail, so the packet buffer six to, uh, zero to six are ready to process, okay? So the application process, these, so these data may belong to different file descriptors, okay? So the application process these data by traversing the ring from car to tail and after that, application returns these uh, buffers pointed by links, ring slots to the kernel on the next poll system call. Okay? So this is uh, how it works end to end. So by the way, so the application may want, may, may not want to return packet buffer to the kernel because imagine that you are building some key value store, okay? So you wanna keep data without returning buffer to the kernel, okay? And also application don't wanna copy data to store data, okay? So the, in that case, before returning buffer to the kernel, so application can swap out packet buffer one to the six, and uh, sorry, one to six, and instead you can fill some free packet buffer, in this case, eight, nine, 10, to the same slot. If application returns uh, the, <coughs> the slot with these uh, buffer indexes, then the kernel recycles packet buffer 0, 8, 9, 3, 4, 5, 10, okay? So packet buffer 1, 2, 3 were already swapped out, 
So the, it's a, the, the strong orange part, so they are not recycled. So application can maintain and organize these packet buffers using some, uh, uh, some convenient various data structures. In this picture, application organizes these packet buffers using a B plus three. Um, so you see that packet buffer one to six, uh, for, for example, for packet buffer one, it's from packet buffer one, um, offset 96 bytes, skipping some unnecessary TCP IP header, and also for the length of 120 bytes. So application can describe uh, the extent of uh, the particular packet buffer by using, also using that any data structures. So now, so if your application want to persist data, so suppose that application want to keep the data uh, across reboot, in that case, using XMM ex, ex, uh, the extension, so you can create file system on NVMM and create packet buffer on create packet buffers or shared memory region on NVMM, and we can do the same. Okay? Then, if we organize data, all the data on NVMM, and also storing B plus three on somewhere persistent or on NVMM or on disk, whatever then the application creates persistent data structure which can be accessed without any data copy since NIC DMA, okay? In this way, because, because in this way, so the NIC DMA packets directly onto NVMA, okay? So now, so the, I think, so I hope so the, you understood so the, it, uh, it seems to be useful, but uh, now going to the probably most important part of this talk. So the how the application code looks like. Okay, so let's take some time to understand this. So the, as usual, the, we first open netmap port by giving a name. So since we use a stack port, a kind of netmap port, and uh, we create netmap port, we open netmap port with nm open uh, using uh, the, this is stack name, stack port zero, okay? So this indicates stack port. So we get some descriptor for netmap. Second, uh, we also register some NIC to that stack port. So in other words, it associates a NIC to that stack port using uh, existing I.O. control for NetMap, okay? After that, after setting up some data paths from the NetMap port and the NIC, uh, we open the socket bind. We open the socket and bind and listen as usual, okay? So let's imagine, so we got the socket S. So now the we create the array of two file descriptors. One is for netmap file descriptor, and the other is for listening uh, socket descriptor. Uh, now I'm going to infinite loop, and the port system calls monitors two file descriptors. So one is the netmap one, the other is listening socket one. So let's check that listening socket first. If there is some new if the poll, ret poll returns, and if a new request or new TCP connection is arriving, the, the, then the file descriptor as one, it should be poll in, okay? So let's just accept this file descriptor and register, associate uh, the, this file descriptor to netmap file descriptor using this IO control, okay? So the, if the netmap file descriptor is available, then the let's traverse the ring, uh, let's traverse the ring slots and, uh, for, uh, by manipulating its data. So you can know to which file descriptor uh, this data belongs to by taking file descriptor field of netmap slot. And of course you can get some uh, actual batch address pointer to the data using normal netmap uh, the translation macro. Also, uh, we introduced some offset field in the slot. But we're not extending netmap slot at all. We are using some unnecessary field, okay? So I think that, that it looks simple enough and hope everybody understood. So what's going on internally? This is a little bit complex and may need some uh, knowledge about uh, the internal kernels. So, so number describes some order of execution. So the, after calling poll system call, 
and the kernel iterates over the nick ring, okay, after making packets available on the main memory. So the kernel the pick packet buffer or packet descriptor and wraps the data using nbuff and points this uh, netmap buffer from the nbuff and puts the nbuff into IF input, okay? Then the data goes up to the TCP IP implementation, and if it is in order TCP segment, you know that some of the SO, uh, the app call is invoked. So actually in the accepting IO control, it's internally the set, uh, the set SO app call, or so something is set to the socket, accepting a socket. So the in order TCP segment is marked in the step number three, it is our own stuff. And in this way, so step number two, so it record the list, it creates a list of uh, the ready file, this ready packets, list of packets which is ready to be consumed by application. Okay, so in the end, after processing all the packets against TCP IP stack, uh, the kernel uh, creates, iterates over that ready, ready packet to be consumed by application and sets this, uh, the netmap buffers to application visible ring. Okay. So in this way, we can batch system call, we can batch IO, and we can avoid per socket system call as well. Okay. So here is the performance. So this is the experiment with single CPU core and the left side is the case which we don't store data, so we are just uh, consuming the data, okay? So compared to the normal Linux, we can get, say, 50% performance improvement, also latency also gets uh, reducted, get, uh, get reduced. So in case of storing data to NVMM, if we store uh, data to NVMM using just memory copy, we get, say, about 30% improvement, but if we directly DMA data into NVMM, we can get 50% of, or even more improvement, which is the orange bar over Linux, okay? So I think this is pretty good. Uh, here is the multiple CPU core scalability. So the x-axis is number of CPU cores, and the y-axis is transaction per second, so a million transactions per second. And uh, so the, what we compared against is no opacity is just a case which doesn't store data at all, so just consuming data, okay? So copy is de storing data using memory copy, and zero copy is directly DMA into NVMA. So the, the point where the, where the, uh, the throughput becomes flat is uh, the reaching to 10 gigabit line rate, okay? So in all the cases, uh, it's not perfect, but it scales pretty well, right? So at least until 10 CPU cores. So I would say so this multi-core scalability here is pretty good. So we also ported the page to the Redis. Redis is a popular persistent key value store. And in this case, we directly DMA packets onto NVMA. And so we tried it uh, different, the so right size, which is 64 bytes and one kilobyte. We also change the ratio of write request, also change the distribution of data, which is distribution of keys, uh, which is uniform and zip and 0 0.99. So the, you may familiar with the, the key value store, so people, many people use the YCSP benchmark, so which contains set of workloads like read mostly or update heavy. So these two circles correspond to YCSP workload. So the comparison to Linux and Paste is head-to-head -head comparison, but we also measure the case which runs, which runs Redis on normal Linux, but configured not to persist data at all. But even for that case, uh, we can uh, get much higher performance. So the Paste supports Linux and FreeBSD, and actually it's a, I initially implemented for Linux, but now porting to FreeBSD. For Linux, actually, that we can avoid uh, the, we don't have to modify Linux core at all. We can do everything just within NetMap. 
as other NetMap components. But for FreeBSD, unfortunately, we need a little bit of a change in the current network stack. So this is a patch what I want to submit. And so unless if you strongly disagree right now, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to submit it. And the problem is the Linux has this net, uh, the paste, uh, the manipulate socket within the kernel. So it associates uh, the socket uh, the into NetMap object in the kernel. So the when application calls cross on the socket, okay, the kernel side of NetMap wants to know that, okay. So in Linux there is uh, such a callback, in, but in FreeBSD there is not. So the <laughs> I want to add this. Uh, so but uh, so I, I know some relevant people here. So let's talk later. <laughs> and here is the summary. So the using Pace, uh, you can integrate kernel TCP/IP stack with NetMap API. Also supports emerging non-volatile main memory. And the status is now in progress with upstreaming to the, uh, the NetMap uh, with Giuseppe. And there is also some academic papers in case of you are interested in. Right. And uh, it's not really exciting, but the, so all the experiment or some numbers shown the, in this talk was obtained using Linux, but uh, it's not good. So I want to show it's also running with FreeBSD. So, uh, what? Can you see text, I think? Oh, I think you can see text. Oh, wait a minute. OK. So it, it's a free BSD, OK? It's not Linux, OK? So let's, uh, let's uh, run some normal HTTP server. So this HTTP server is a pretty normal one. It's just uh, the KQ-based program, uh, which I showed in the beginning of the presentation. Uh, let's so run some normal server first. Okay. Uh, oh shit. So this is the, the normal HTTP benchmark tool called WRK. So in this command line, so we are running experiments for three seconds and twenty using twenty TCP connections and threads. And it is continually creating HTTP posts with 120, sorry, 1200 bytes, okay? So this is VM, so it is just to show something running. And uh, you see that, so throughput is about uh, the 96, uh, uh, so nine kilos requests per second, it's a pretty slow, but okay, this is, this is normal uh, the free list, okay? So this is very slow because this is Linux. Uh, sorry, this is a virtual machine. Oh shit! Okay, now let's use uh, the paste. Okay, let's see what happens. I hope it doesn't crash. <laughs> okay, it's ready. You see that it's uh, quite fast, right? So given that the VM, so even in the VM, the, we can see some about 40% performance improvement with uh, much lower latency, actually. So the, oh, shit, it get away. Uh, so latency, uh, uh, latency of 50% was 1.74 milliseconds. Uh, now, but it's uh, lower latency with higher throughput. That's pretty good. Um, so that's it. And I'm very happy because the, the demonstration